what we're gonna do is we're gonna buff Blitzcrank. We're gonna buff mm -hmm. Soraka. We're gonna buff AD Yumi. <laughs> okay. Well, and... now the cameras are rolling, so we should probably you oh, know, yeah, get don't... to our talk. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're here to talk about mid-scopes today. My name is Tim. I'm a designer on the Summoner's Rift team. Um, I've done a few mid-scopes in the past, like Syndra, Swain, and a long time ago, Ramis, and I'm here with my friends. I'm Ezra. Um, I'm also a designer on the Summoner's Rift team. I do item balance systems, that kind of thing. Um, previously, I worked on Rengar as a mid-scope, and I'm currently working on Nikon. I'm August. I'm the lead champion designer, and mid-scopes I've worked on is most recently Jax, and then before that, Talia. And the first question we have to answer, which I'm sure is on a lot of players' minds, is what is a mid-scope, and what sets it apart from balance work DGUs, CGUs, ASUs, ABCs, whatever, letters, all that stuff. Probably the best way to say it, like in a, in a big summary, is VGU, Visual Gameplay Update, is kind of like a new champion. A mid scope is like refreshing a champion. So with the VGU, like say what we did with Pantheon or Aurelia, you got a very new champion out of that. You got new animations, new sounds, new VO, new kit, and that's an important part. Whereas a mid-scope is a lot more about refreshing a current character for its current players. In its essence, it's taking the fantasy of a character. We're not making a new character, we're not making a new fantasy, and making it a 12 out of 10. It's like, how far can we push this so that players feel like, oh, for Swain, I'm this huge demon bird that can be in the middle of their team, or for Talia, that I'm actually an Earth Weaver and I'm not punished by using my Q. And then the second part about mid-scopes that's really important here is that because they're on lower scope in terms of work, they're on shorter timelines, some only take like one or two months, and which means we can get them out a lot faster. So how do we go about finding a good target for a mid-scope, right? Because there's a lot of different projects we do. What defines how we find a target for a VGU versus random patchwork that me and Ezra do on a two-week basis? When a character feels like they maybe have lost their place in the game, where they feel a bit stale, they feel like they might not have as much of a purpose as they used to, a designer can look at a mid-scope and say, hey, is there some way to like really refresh who this character is in the game and what their place is in the entire League roster? In the past, we've done mid-scope-like projects. A lot of them have been really good. We've done Sin Zhao, Tom Kench, Sona, Rengar. We, we've done projects like this. But a lot of times when we do like this level of work, it's framed in terms of problems. Back in the day when we did our, our, the original work on Talia, that players said, Talia's a pro problem, we need to fix her for mid lane. And we, we succeeded in that, but it was like kind of at a cost to, to Talia players, as opposed to possibly a benefit. And so a lot of mid scopes are framed in terms of not problems, but opportunities. It's about asking the question, hey, I see this character, and I see somewhere that they could be even cooler, even better. And maybe we've fixed some problems along the way, but it's about finding what's exciting about the character that we can really play up and enhance. So you worked on Nico, you worked on Syndra. How do we select mid-scopes? Like, is there a method to how we're choosing these projects? The way I see it is for the most part, it's strong passion for a character. Someone who's like deeply involved with the character, deeply interested in the character's success, they understand the character. You know, some of these characters have been live uh, for years and years and years. So you're, you've played them a lot. You, you truly understand the failings and the opportunity. I play Nico. I, I used to play her a lot, actually. And I was just like, at the end of the day, I was like, this character isn't... She, I, I want to have fun, and she's not letting me, right? <laughs> I want to do all these things, and I want to trick people, I want to catch people, and then I just can't, right? And she's still fun, she's still fine, but she could be so much more. That type of message is what we want to have for Midscopes, which is, it's not about problems, it's not about meeting a schedule. Um, or stuff like that, it's really about finding a fantasy and seeing if we can enhance that for the players, right? Yeah. And that's what a mid-scope yeah. is. And, and sometimes like a mid-scope can come from like, you know, just years of players telling us something. There's a lot of Swain players who, for a few years after his rework, were like, hey, I want to play this guy mid, and I feel like I can't play him mid. And he was powerful mid in terms of win rate, but that didn't mean he felt powerful or that he was super fun there. And we would constantly have Swain players telling us, it's like, hey, yeah, I can play this guy's support, He's a cool support, but what about mid lane? I want that mid Swain back. And that was actually, I think, one of the inspirations for the work that ended up being done to Swain. I think it's important to note that it's not other players who might like Swain. It's Swain players who feel like their their character isn't working for them. And the goal of Midscopes isn't make a character more popular. Like, everyone will play this character. It's the players who love this character actually feel like the character is working for them. I think there's probably a question of like, 
You've done Silas, you've done Tom Kench, you've done Sona, Sin Zhao. Why, why, why are you calling these, mid these things mid-scopes now? Like, what's, what's the point of that? By saying, hey, we're doing this project, they're called mid-scopes. This is the amount of resources they need. We can plan for them ahead of time so that when a, a designer, uh, like say, Tim is like, hey, I want to do a Syndra change, but it's going to need a new queue. Instead of us saying to Tim, hey, you can't do that. We don't have any resources to make a new queue. We can say, okay, we can plan for that. We can slot that in and then we'll get it out to players in two months. Now that we've covered about what midscopes are and how we pick them out and what we want to do, what can players expect in 2023 for midscopes? This isn't set in stone right now, but it's something we'd like to work up to is long term, if we could be shipping a midscope, say once every two months, then we could do things like put out a midscope roadmap for players, say, hey, here's the midscopes we're thinking about this year and set better expectations for like maybe your character could get one. I think one thing that can be rough as a League of Legends player is if you think your character needs an update, it might be years before they actually get it. But with midscopes, they succeed similar to a VGU in like revitalizing the champion without necessarily taking all that extra time, which means we can do more of them. So talking about expectations before we end, do you want to give us a sneak peek on what Nico's midscope is going to be about? Leak Nico, where is she? Well, I can give, so there's a lot of things going on in Nico, <laughs> but I can give the one sneak peek, which is her passive, instead of just turning to other champions, is now other things, anything. She can turn into a plant, she can turn into a team of mushroom, she can turn into a minion, a monster, and a champion. Can she turn into a better teammate? No. She'll actually probably be a worse teammate. Oh, okay. That's a core <laughs> gameplay mechanic in League. All right, so you have a Nico that turned in the wards, literally, coming to a rift near you. <laughs> Hopefully soon, TM. Um, but that's all we have for today. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, thanks for playing with us on the rift. Enjoy your ranked climbs. Thank you. Thank you.